kind of talked about uh, a systematic way of looking at, at yeah. I guess, your health and your aging. And so there's the application. Of watching. So do you have kind of other ways that you um, systematize how you approach aging? Yeah. So I think that like once someone realizes that, okay, well, you know what, I'm tracking my KPIs at work and I'm doing all these things in other areas of my life. Like, what do I do for my health? Because I think that for a lot of people up until now, aging was inevitable. And some of them start waking up now with the new science coming up because we, we've done an excellent job in the past 20 years to actually understand the hallmarks of aging, why we age and why we don't have to, just like uh, Dr. David Sinclair says, right? So when we realize this and we realize that, look, it's not, it, it's not an autopilot, right? Like I can take control of my health by just um, asking myself, okay, how do, how can I be in the right trajectory to kind of maintain my health and offset this aging process? Then the next question is, okay, how do I track this? And what are um, like, what is the routine that I'm organizing for myself? And I have an agreement with myself, for example, that at least three times a week I'm doing, uh, I'm working out. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm, I'm usually I'm working out more days, like almost every day. Like I would have some cardio and such, but there are some weeks that are very challenging because let's say, you know, I'm very busy with my work and, you know, we're launching the products and new markets and such. Um, and I can't wait to talk to you uh, <laughs> next time about all that, because honestly, 2024 is going to be an amazing year for NMN Bio uh, with new markets being launched in the next few mm -hmm. months. Um, and we can't wait to kind of just improve the lives of, uh, of you know, new customers in, in more ways than months. Mm -hmm. That, that, that one, uh, which I think we will achieve this year uh, at uh, at a basically like much greater <laughs> scale because of our uh, new distribution deals that are coming in right now. Um, so yeah, so to, to, to go back to your question is that, okay, well, what am I tracking? And you need to kind of ask yourself, what are the important things? So uh, exercise has undeniable benefits for your health and for longevity. So this is one thing that everyone I think should be tracking. So if you have an agreement with yourself that, look, I promise myself that at least three times a week, I will be working out, right? And then you just like, no matter what happens, you just stick to your promise, right? So you're kind of building character and integrity and discipline as well as you as you go. And from that, when you actually are true to your, to your word and to yourself, this will fuel you to do more and to to be more motivated to continue your longevity journey, I think. And, you know, it can be like this with everything. Um, so that's one thing that I'm definitely, you know, like I'm never breaking my promise to myself that I will be exercising at least three times a week. And then I'm tracking uh, probably uh, the insulin spikes that I'm giving to myself, like how many insulin spikes a week I would give to myself. But again, because I'm optimizing from for food sequence, I'm making sure that I'm minimizing them as much as possible, even when I want to have carbohydrates. So for example, you know, I'm at a nice restaurant, I will have the edamame first or the salad first, and then I will have my main, and then I will have the fries that I'm craving or something <laughs> like that, right? Because they're, they're in front of me and like everyone ordered a bunch of other stuff and I, I just want to nibble, <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll minimize that and I'll track that as well. And then, of course, uh, you know, when when it comes to biomarkers and actually measuring your health with blood tests, yeah, I do believe that this is um, this is also very beneficial to kind of know where you stand. Homocysteine is another biomarker which is very important uh, because it's uh, tightly correlated with uh, heart disease. Right, the higher the homocysteine, the higher the possibility of you getting a heart disease and. Um, there's a whole biology behind it that we're not going to go into right now, but um, 
it's an important measure, measurement, uh, including CRP as well. So mm -hmm. I've been recently looking into correlation of CRP with um, with uh, autoimmune diseases, for example. And interestingly, you know, um, just as I said about the NAD brain that I realized, okay, you know what, you don't have to suffer anymore. You don't have to have brain fog, like it's easily solvable. Is the same thing with inflammation in the body because inflammation is actually involved in aging. So it's a, a, there is a term, uh, um, that has been around recently inflammaging, right? Because again, it's super tightly correlated with the aging process and our tissues just get inflamed and this um, causes you know, this um, inflammatory cytokines to be activated and it's a cascade of inflammation and um, uh, it's related to like uh, senescence as well. Senescent cells thrive in inflammation and whatnot and uh, it's all uh, basically like a, um, a negative spiral from there. So for that reason, I was looking into autoimmune disease and inflammation. And um, the more I read on autoimmune disease, the more I realize that this is also preventable, you know, because so many autoimmune diseases are preventable because when you remove things like gluten and when you remove things like um, insulin resistance buildup, autoimmune disease becomes so much more manageable and symptoms disappear and then you're not diagnosed anymore. So it's very interesting. Like we do have a collaboration here um, in the UAE with the uh, autoimmune uh, community uh, called Stride. Uh, so we will be doing some seminars on this, some talks moving forward. So this is also very exciting because I, again, I firmly believe in uh, the in spreading awareness and in making people aware that actually, okay, well, there is so many things that are in my control, right? So let's say you don't have the budget to have like a super fancy supplement routine and take 50 supplements a day, 100 supplements a day um, and such. You don't have to because if you're smart with how you're honing your daily habits, including you know, removing inflammatory factors um, and um, building up the food sequence that you're having in order to minimize your insulin spikes, like this is already moving the needle massively, right? And then being um, regular with your exercise and having a good sleep hygiene and going to sleep at like about the same time and such. So, you know, it's um, it's it's very interesting with regards to, you know, the, the sleep patterns. Some people are naturally night Owls, for example. So actually there is no one um, sleep pattern that is good for everyone. You kind of need to also evaluate this for yourself. And, you know, there are like some free tests that someone can take on online to, to see what we call, um, what is their chronotype. So chronotype is the type, the natural type of a sleeping pattern that your body would have. And it's largely dependent on your genes, basically. So I myself am um, a morning person. I wake up uh, very early. So there are actually a couple of types of a morning person. So it's the very early one, which is myself, which is called the lark. And then you have the regular morning type. And then you have the intermediate type that is taking naps during the day. And then you have the, uh, the night owl and whatnot. So all kinds of um, of ki all kinds of chronotypes out there. Uh, sometimes they marry each other, and then <laughs> and then it's uh, uh, someone needs to compromise, and uh, like someone is always miserable and whatnot because they can't synchronize themselves, which is um, uh, not ideal. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, it, it all comes back to basics, right? So it's your exercise, your nutrition, your sleep, and your supplements. Um, and if you're conscious about what you're doing in this major four things in your routine, you're going to get great results. Right. So interesting. So uh, was it gluten? So you see gluten mm. as being uh, highly inflammatory, I guess, one of the more inflammatory foods yeah. yeah so just out of interest how often do you get your blood markers done Is it so i'm trying to to get them done maybe twice a year mm -hmm. um i i would love to do them more like maybe like once a quarter or once a month but again to be completely honest with you I'm not biohacking myself all day long. I have a company to run. So right. I'm actually, you know, like I, I'm quite busy and I'm still not having enough time for myself to 
um, you know, to 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 do this the way I would like to. Uh, and that's the reason, actually, that, you know, I'm not um, I'm not having a strong opinion on this in terms of other people tracking it religiously every month, because I understand how hard it can be, because, you know, we all have uh, things to do and, you know, careers and such. Uh, so it is what it is. <laughs> How about yourself? Uh, how yeah. how frequently do you track everything? Well, it's at least twice a year, but it, it, we're aiming for like once a quarter, that kind of number. Yeah. But uh, but thinking about it as much as possible, it's really just to check that everything's still in place, right? It's mm -hmm. uh, we do have a look at it, and then there may be some things are out of whack. Or, okay, so let's we'll, we'll try and try and correct that. But um, yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not like that actionable. It, it's really just yeah. making sure that there's nothing wrong. And if there's something wrong there, then we need yeah. to fix it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the thing there. And then um, something else, again, like a rule of thumb for myself when it comes to insulin resistance and whether it's being developed in a person or not, is that if you look at a person and they do have fat around their waist, they have visceral fat, uh, most likely they already have started developing insulin resistance, right? Because the reason why there is a um, visceral fat around your waist is because your liver is already like kind of fatty, basically. And the fat is not being dissolved because you are eating carbs all the time. And then your body says, okay, well, we have all these glucose molecules floating around. So we don't have to uh, break down this, this fat molecules inside the body. And then like when the liver is already full of that, then the visceral fat around the waist will start accumulating. And then again, like you're entering this negative spiral of insulin resistance and um, inflammation and reactive oxygen species in the arteries. So now this is damaging your arteries. And now, uh, you know, you, you're increasing your risk of, of heart disease as well. And, um, you know, that's, that's just something to be aware of, right? So your body fat can tell you a lot and like your body composition can already tell you a lot without having a blood test, right? And then uh, the actionable item here would be to say, okay, well, I have visceral fat, so what can I change? And like the, the thing that will move the needle the most uh, for such a person, for example, uh, that has some some visceral fat accumulating around their waist would be intermittent fasting, right? Because then you're getting into ketosis and then you start burning this extra visceral fat that you have accumulating. Um, so, you know, just start narrowing down the window where, um, uh, you know, you're feeding yourself, basically the feeding window. Like um, you don't have to do it straight away. Like you don't have to narrow it down very aggressively because then your body will be shocked and you will be hungry and irritable all the time so but you can start shrinking it right so have your breakfast a bit later have your dinner a bit earlier and then it goes uh, down 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 so you, from you know from 10 hours of feeding window during the day you're going to eight seven six five four and and this could be done you know as fast as you feel comfortable with basically and then with that um, you know, like I think that most gyms actually offer, you know, like just free uh, DEXA scans and whatnot and things like that that can evaluate also like your your body fat percentage and such. And um, and yeah, and that's the thing there. And of course, you don't have to go um, too lean when it comes to longevity, um, because especially for women, there is a window of ideal body fat percentage and you don't want to go above it and you don't want to go below it mm -hmm. either because what happens is that when your body fat would dip too low, your reproductive hormones will stop, start decreasing as well because now your body will be in panic mode saying, oh, there is not enough nutrients around. She's not feeding us enough. So this means we probably shouldn't reproduce. So then they, uh, the, the hormone production turns down. So in order to avoid this, there is a window of a body fat percentage that uh, especially women should be aware of because it looks like in men it also happens. So your testosterone will go down eventually. Um, but uh, in women, it's like more sensitive. Um, so, mm -hmm. so definitely, you know, I have to kind of have a look at that 
Uh, my body fat is 19.9, <laughs> um, mm. I, I recently measured, um, which is in the ideal range probably for a woman is between, let's say, 17% and maybe 21, 22. This is ideal body fat percentage because it's not too little. Uh, so my reproductive hormones are still in full, full force and they're being maintained very nicely. Um, and um, yeah, so I think that this is also very important to note. Was there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Uh, I think we covered most of it. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. We covered quite a lot of things today and it was very interesting. I <laughs> hope that you know, our audience will find mm -hmm. this discussion interesting as well. I would be very interested to, you know, kind of read in the comments again. <laughs> and uh, honestly, okay. like comments keep on surprising me because people uh, pick up on very interesting things, right? And they uh, they kind of pick up on, on different perspectives and, and kind of give me like food for thought as well for next mm -hmm. interviews. And um, yeah, I think that would be it for today. Um, okay. Just like you know, we, we care about other areas and other aspects of our life. I think that it's very important to realize that, you know, like we only have one body and it is a temple and it's very important to also track how it's doing and be conscious of the choices that we make every day when it comes to our health and longevity. Yes, absolutely. So uh, where again can people follow you and NMN Bio? Yeah, absolutely. So they can find me on LinkedIn under uh, Dr. Elena Saranova, same on Instagram. And then our website is animanbio.co.uk. This is our main website. Um, and, you know, here in the UAE, we do have our products now delivered all across the UAE and we have them in retail stores through Ask Their Pharmacy, our exclusive collaboration deal. And I think the delivery time through different delivery services now is like something like 30 minutes uh, through a platform called mm -hmm. Talabat here um, in the UAE, which is great. You can get your Renaman in 30 minutes delivered anywhere um, in the country. Um, with that in mind, you, you can find us on Instagram uh, at NMN Bio. And um, any feedback on the interviews is always appreciated. So if someone has a specific question, I would be very happy if they could contact me uh, again on Instagram or LinkedIn and just just ask me, um, you know, anything in particular when it comes to health and well-being. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, we will link to all of those in the description. Okay, thank Dr. Saranova, thank you.